Recording. Yeah, we're still okay. recording. Okay, so just going back, since you already <laughs> since you've got your first job, yeah, there's obviously expectations to mm. to that job. Was there any any stereotypes as a migrant that you've experienced um with your first job in accounting? Um, yeah, I I think um because it required a lot of meetings and mm. a lot of talking to clients. I guess they would always have that fear of you not being able to communicate what you mean mm. or like what you wanted yeah. to say yeah. and Which... being really young at that time no I wasn't really young I was 24 but I That's remember I, young though, yeah. yeah and then maybe as an Asian guy mm. Mm. a petite Asian guy specifically they wouldn't think <clears throat> I knew a lot so yeah. I actually got asked like one of the clients asked me um, do you actually know what you're talking about <laughs> it's like, hang on. Hang on. <laughs> yes, I do. So Don't, I guess, yeah, yeah I, maybe that's the like stereotype at first. Mm. Like they wouldn't, they wouldn't think that you'd be able to talk their language. Yes. But being Filipino, I'm really proud that I always get that comment. It's like, how do you guys speak so well? Like, same. Like, yeah. English is a second language. Yeah, exactly. Because I tell them, well, we get fined at school in high school if we don't yeah. speak English. If yeah. we speak Tagalog, we actually have, or Bisaya, we actually have to pay a peso that goes towards penalty, our yeah. Christmas party. Yeah. <laughs> so we would have lechon. <laughs> so and I guess that's the... Yeah. yeah. Um, and we talk about this in, a, in the other podcast as well, that being Filipino, I think we just try, um, not really hard, but we just try our best to actually be good at communication because mm. even like you know the, the people who that hasn't actually finished school mm. like hasn't even reached high school yeah. they would try to actually welcome and entertain um yeah. foreigners and this comes with our being very hospitable as yeah. a country yeah. as a nation that like we're just welcoming to everyone yeah yeah like can, can you imagine like a tricycle driver would say Eat, eat, yeah, eat. exactly. Just, like, like, we're just very welcoming to everyone, <laughs> yeah, true, yeah. And I, I think, like, that's the most common. And I think, like, even for me, it's very relatable because I, I've have received a lot of comments mm. about uh, they I received a lot of feedback about that. Like, how come your English is so okay. fluent and yeah. you're you're very you're very good at you know talking mm. and having like small conversations, but I guess it. Again, boils down to like culture, culture, yeah. family, True. training, and up to you. You have to adjust, isn't it? Yeah. So yeah. I don't know. Uh, now thinking, I don't. I don't think there's. Uh, I can't think of like anything specific in terms of negative stereotypes. Yeah. Mm, okay. Nothing that comes to mind very quickly. Yeah. But, but I, I think communication I think is actually the number one, regardless True. of what profession you're having. Yeah. 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 And and I guess it's also like because they've just known you. Yeah. They haven't known you for a long time. They would actually like think, "Hey, does yeah. he? Does she actually know what she's doing?" Yeah. Like, yeah, they would question your mm. thing, and that's where that previous conversation of us comes in. Like your confidence. Yeah, you have to make sure that you're firm and confident about what you're doing yeah, because that says a lot, and also yeah. like it will give your clients yeah the confidence to have faith in you yeah. and mm. just to make sure that the project goes like smoothly. But somehow that worked to my advantage though, because they weren't expecting so much. So when you start <laughs> deli- when you start delivering like the the That's- baseline was really low and then <laughs> yeah. you start doing things like oh he can so actually the do something this yeah, yeah. 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 The no, no, so the standard initially up. was this yeah. and then you can deliver a little bit and they get impressed already yeah, yeah. so it's like it's good in a it's way good. Yeah, yeah it's good so throughout your journey was there anything that stood out for you like as a person as a uh like um an instance think, yeah, where, yeah like anything in general any oh, situation okay so there was this um i think i had like a really life changing career move cuz um after i did so we talked about like my first accounting mm. job right and then um after being there for 2 years i just resigned for no reason <laughs> like a very unexpected yeah. no backup plans my boss was so shocked and oh. I, I wrote my resignation letter on the day itself. So mm. I woke up really okay. And then when I started driving, I had like questions about where I'm heading, like what my purpose in life is. And then I just started writing my resignation letter Was as soon driving? as I no, nah. <laughs> just, as soon as I arrived and then gave it to my boss. And then he was just so shocked. And I mm. was in like tears. Like Aww. I was really crying really, really hard explaining to him my reason and um 
though i guess that was very were you, were you going through something that time yeah sort of it was very brave move for me because yeah i i resigned <laughs> without so financially of course you need money uh -huh. so i didn't have any backup plans like i wasn't i didn't start looking for a job or something but i just resigned because the the very reason is i just felt like i wasn't in a place where i actually see myself growing and growing mm. professionally? i mean i can grow professionally in that company but i don't think it is in line with what i want to do what the bigger purpose Your I calling. thought was. Yeah, yeah, what my calling is. And then, so I told my boss, because I feel like, um, I think y you need to have that purpose of like bigger than yourself, right? Mm, true. And you somehow need to merge that with the profession or whatever you do so that life mm. becomes easier. Because that will yeah. drive you. Because that yeah. will drive you to just keep going, going yeah. even on difficult days. Mm -hmm. So exactly. I've always, I always a knew. Libro ba to? No! A, a purpose-driven life? <laughs> no, I always knew that coming to Australia, I would want to end up in a not-for-profit organization mm -hmm. or government mm -hmm. because I, maybe it's sort of like the training as well that I got. Like, I wanted to work for a purpose. I mm. I didn't want to just work for money. Mm. Mm. Um, so being in a not for profit or being in a government actually means a lot to me because mm. then I know every service that I do somehow affects and like gives the a greater good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Unlike what I was doing, I was doing good, but then I I was helping like the rich people already become richer so yeah. that kind of made me question my career path mm. and um of course it's very difficult to go in government jobs because i didn't have the residency and same with not for profit i didn't have the baseline clearance mm. and then my boss was just so astonished it's like are you really sure this is what you want to do mm. because it's kind of big step you, and you don't have a and very random mm. like they thought i was okay mm. and so where do you want to go? I don't have a company yet, but I know it will work out. <laughs> it, eventually, it will work out. Like yeah. We don't have a choice. Again. Yeah, Again. Yes, <laughs> exactly. But I knew where I wanted to go. Mm. At least that was a good start. And at least I knew that I really wanted working for government or not for profit mm. for me to actually mm. take that leap of... What triggered that though? But, like, was there something when you woke up? Or? Uh... Was it the air? Oh my god, it's so weird. It's a concert. Uh, okay. It's, it's a, a concert, concert by Coldplay. Oh. Which is so weird. Because I didn't know Coldplay before I watched the concert. Like, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll start listening to the songs yep. because I'm watching a Coldplay concert. And then during the Coldplay concert, um, I was like directly behind the VIP. Because we lined up very early. Mm. And so we were like on the mosh pit, right? Mm -hmm. So when you're on the mosh pit, you have to line up. So we kind of lined up not so early, like an hour ago. So we and we managed to be like really in front. Mm. And there's this song. Um, it's titled Everglow. Mm. Anyway, there's that line in <laughs> somewhere in the song that somehow talks about the legacy that you leave behind. Aww. And that just kept playing and playing. And I think the happiness I felt from that concert you know when you get so happy yeah. and then so the next day yeah. just you just get <laughs> really low yeah. because you just reach that really high moment of yeah. your life yeah. that was basically me like I was so happy with that concert that I actually questioned where I was heading <laughs> and that's so random because like who would have thought ever like Coldplay, Coldplay would change your, my your yeah my perspective about work and stuff but Somehow it they just reminded me that um if if I had to um if I had to progress with my career it had to be impactful it had to be oh. meaningful. Can I just say something though? Yeah. Um, I would just want to say that like good on you for acknowledging that you're not happy with mm. your career yeah. career path anymore. Not everyone has that. Yeah. Yeah. So. And not also, everyone would have the balls to do that. Exactly. And, and even not, me, like, I No, and like, I guess not everyone would have a choice as well. Mm. Yeah. yeah. To actually and, just leave yeah. work. And again, the bold move that you did, like dropping everything financially, yeah. emotionally, um, just like, like you don't have a plan. Yeah. Like most of us are very organized. Yeah. We plan everything in our life. But I guess at the end of the day, it's, 
it's a big decision, but yeah. God led you to where you're supposed to be yeah, um, and where your heart is supposed yeah. to be. and Really, where yeah. my heart wants to be. Aww. So actually, when I was applying for a job, right? So after I resigned, I was looking for a job and I got, I know I got judged many times and I got questioned. And really, by yeah, whom? I, I had a hard time looking for a replacement because mm. I didn't look for um, a backup plan, right? I didn't yeah. have yeah. any backup job. So when I started applying, they didn't believe my reason because it wasn't very common to just resign because you don't feel like it's working for your purpose. But so they thought I got fired. Did they mm. ask that during your interview? No, that's that's just the message I got. So they didn't oh, they didn't say, okay. "Oh, I think you're not saying the truth. I think you got fired." Is but, that what they say? No, no, they didn't say that, but that was, was sort of I indirectly. I feel, yeah, looking back, I feel that was what made it difficult for me mm. to find the job that I wanted initially. Mm, okay. Cuz it's like, "Nah, you're just making excuses. You got fired. You're no good." <laughs> oh. So that wasn't really difficult. So that move made me step down. Like in terms of career, because I was doing accounting already, mm. and then I had to do something else that in the professional world mm -hmm. would be a bit of a step down from oh, doing accounting. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. But to me, I I wasn't I I swear I wasn't bothered at all. It's like mm. sometimes you just really need to step down to go up again. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. 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 Before you can go up, you can actually need to take a few steps backwards. Yeah, for you yeah. And maybe to learn just, something, absorb, and everything. maybe just look back and then just to reflect in plan yep. your way ahead. Mm. And that's true to learn because yeah. where I am now, if I didn't get the initial job after um, resigning from mm. accounting job, it would have been difficult to do my current job. So it all kind of made sense eventually. Yeah. Exactly. It's like, it all oh my eventually. god, yeah. this is just yeah. working perfectly fine for me. Yep. But I didn't think it would. Yeah. Before. But again, like I now I you're would inspiring just... me to pursue plumbing. Oh, <laughs> why not, <laughs> baby? I need a plumbing <laughs> oh. in my house. Oh, uh, professional plumber, professional, please. really. <laughs> um, but I, I, I with guess... the biggest plums, oh, ah. biggest plums. <laughs> I love the yard. Lumps, I love yard. yard. <laughs> but like again, like if at first you don't succeed, mm. try and try yes, again. Yes, yes. Because like, but this is like what we talked about the previous um episode. I'm just gonna like touch base mm. again on that, mm. just to remind like the people and inspire people as well like if people are second guessing you or doubting you prove them wrong yeah like seriously i was also don't like, take it too seriously exactly. just work yeah because like the previous not, well i'm still working there now but the company mm. that that my boss before he was actually like very like um not intimidating but it's also like doubtful that i would succeed yeah like he he doesn't believe in me <clears throat> and he just wants me to stay where i am at yeah and I'm like pushing myself to actually try and and um, apply and apply. And then eventually like I got into somewhere that yeah. I am now. Even and before. I remember your episode. You are oh, sorry. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, no, I it's remember fine. your episode talking about like how hard it was to even secure a job interview. Mm. And here we oh are like <laughs> choosing what kind of job you actually oh. like. How much I'm, I'm pay still you not would on like. That face, though. Whatever. <laughs> like, honestly, Let's be yeah. honest. <laughs> <laughs> That's all my, always my fear when I try. Because obviously we're planning to look for a different job now yeah because yeah, yeah. we're trying to move forward do plumbing <laughs> <laughs> i eventually will yeah yeah but yeah i will always have this fear that um no one would take notice of my resume because mm. there's nothing special in there mm. yeah but i always have it at the back of my mind like you just need to hire me and i'm gonna prove you that yeah i'll be a special employee yeah true yeah, yeah. and i guess that your referee will back that up, babe. Yeah. So don't yeah. don't doubt Hopefully. yourself. Don't doubt yourself. Yeah. I'm I'm sure you're gonna do wonders. And again, and for sure you've done a very good branding of yourself. Because like I yes. don't have the confidence when I'm just hearing stories about other people looking for jobs and then they're laying out the demands from um from oh, wow. the employers. Yeah. Like this is the pay that I want. Did you do that? This yeah. is the arrangements oh, that I, I want. That. Like yeah. I still don't have that confidence in. Oh, me that's you know that's very Filipino, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because it's like I think it's the hierarchical things that oh uh, you're entering in this um new environment, new mm -hmm. environment. So you need to adjust because 
the, um, you need a job. Yeah. But that's wrong, especially in Australia. Now yeah. there's just so much shortage. You can actually take advantage of that and yeah. say, it's like, look, there's, uh, I need you, but mm. you need me as well. Yeah. So it's, yeah. a, it's a two-way process yeah. where... And it's a win-win. Yeah. Like if, a you, win-win. if you hire me, I'll prove that you won't, mm. I won't disappoint <clears throat> you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. And and I guess like, um, oh my God, my train of thought is now <laughs> gone. It's so gone. Um, but yeah, you you were saying about that. I just wanna, I just wanna say this though that it's I I think it's also like very Filipino of us thinking that having the masters, all the masters in the world, mm. would get us into where we yes. want. Yes, and that you can do the job properly. Yeah, if you have all these qualifications. Exactly, well, but that that's, I'm so sorry, but yeah. that's not reality. Yeah, but I guess like this is just very Filipino. Yeah, like, yeah. Like before, like you know how. We finish uni. We have to do masters. We have to do MBA. Oh, There's oh, always what this what's MN, next. Yeah. MN, yeah. MN, M, like and like coming from a nursing background, Kev. Mm. You know what? We were just losing money. To mm. be honest, studying all that sorts and not like our salary is not gonna go up mm. more than what we're spending for yeah. to get those qualifications. But in here, it's quite worth it though. Yeah. But I guess it's not really required of you. They yeah. would encourage it, that yeah. I would say. Um, and I would want that for myself as well. Yeah. But it's not like, really I like... I bet you when I go to go back to the Philippines now and look for a job, yeah, like they no, won't one, hire no you. one would consider mm. to hire me as a boss because I don't have masters. I don't have um, exactly. ad- business yeah. administration yeah. Um, courses. Really? Yep. That's yeah. what would happen. The, it, exactly. Like if you go back without those qualifications to back you up, even with your years of experience, mm. like very extensive ones, of uh, you've done a lot of things, yeah. you've rotated to different things. If you do a job like specifically that you're good at, mm. they won't still hire you. Mm. I, I bet, um, just correct me if I'm yeah, wrong, uh, yeah, guys. Yeah, I'm not really sure. But I know it's happening yeah. within the education industry. Yeah. Like yeah. I know teachers have to get their PhD so that they can head yep. like DepEd or something yeah. like that. But yeah, I guess that brings back to our conversation about how good Australia is because mm. there's so many avenues of you for you to grow. Like if if you want to further your study, that's fine. That can help you somehow. Yeah. If you want to further by showing them how you work, that can help you as well. So mm. there's very... There's different avenues somehow that you can yep. explore for you to grow professionally. I'm and just too lazy to study anymore. Yeah, and unending opportunities. <laughs> I mean, nothing wrong to those who likes to study. But yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, and unending opportunities because like we live in a different country, and yeah. I guess like you know people will definitely give you a chance because some people will actually believe mm. in you and yeah. back you up with. But you having know. said that, it's now very competitive in Australia. It is very competitive. With all, like, I think with all the technology advancement and stuff, it's a lot harder now mm. than it was before to actually enter. Say, for instance, at least I'm speaking for government mm. jobs. Yeah. To enter government without qualification. But previously, you can enter mm. without mm. qualifications. But, but yeah. I guess it's also coming from like how do you want to grow yeah. mm. professionally and like with the changing times guys you can just it's either you keep up or you lose track yeah. like just try to say improve your skills yeah harness yeah. some skills yeah. yeah I remember you know what changed my perspective about asking or like demanding mm. um, I got this oh my god I remember I got this from <laughs> Chef <play>. Kim <laughs> yeah yeah Chef from <clears> Chef <throat> Kim she told oh. me shout out Lola and Lola yes, shout out Lola and Lola you know it's the best like, the answer will always be no if you don't ask yeah and that makes a lot of sense in many ways and so it's like if I don't ask my boss then how would I know exactly mm. Mm. I'll keep that in mind yes All right. yeah. just and going just back to the floor be really topic, yeah, confident because well, you're very capable you know yeah. you're very capable <laughs> I guess this is coming from like us um if you're changing jobs, mm. you just like you don't want to be come come too arrogant or yeah, like come, too cocky. come out like um like too cocky yeah. and like too like be very full of it. Said, yeah. yeah, you just that you just want sense. to be a bit humble, but also you want to be like paid accordingly to mm. your skills. Yeah, so like be confident. I yeah. guess I haven't like I haven't applied, but yeah. you know, <laughs> like I, I I wanted to actually just 
try and see yeah. how I go. Yeah. And I'll I'll get that courage from you. Oh, mm. oh thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Just going back to the flow of our conversation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Just my grading in general. Did yeah. it change you as a person? Um, definitely. Mm. It it changed me and humbled me in in many ways. Um, it made ma- magic in terms of believing in your dreams. Yeah. Can I just interrupt? Yeah. Hero adores you. He Aww. kept looking at you. Hi. Oh my God. Hi, Hiro. Right? No. He's just so like, adorable. When I grow up, this is what I'm going to be. Yeah. No, Hero. You know, you know my lifestyle, Hero. No. <laughs> Let's not go there. <laughs> yeah. But then, like, going back to what you're saying, yeah. it's just... Yeah, the magic of believing in your dreams. Yeah. And then coming here with, like, I wasn't penniless, don't get me wrong. Yeah. But I was, like, full of dreams. Yeah. That it it is a good drive and yeah. it's a good push to actually just find something that you're good at and yeah. actually work your way up. And, like, we are just quite fortunate as well. Yeah. Like, coming from our experience, Kev, that, like, we're happy to do this podcast because we just want to... Want to inspire more you people? You just have the spare time. You don't <laughs> no. need to work 24-7. No, seven we, days we a don't week. have... Correction. I'm so sorry. We don't have spare time. We find time. We find time. To oh, make that's this so happen. true. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's so true. Yeah. Because yeah. even though like... um. For us, we're so busy at mm. work. Like the 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 dream about the Commoners podcast is just to inspire more immigrant people. Yeah. To actually just like, try it out. Just yeah. try yeah. it out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but we it's were, not gonna be easy. Yeah. yeah never gonna it's be easy. It's a message. Like, but then it's gonna work out. Exactly. Like like for you, you have an aunt here. Like I don't have my family that I actually know. My cousins are in Brisbane, mm. so we came. Here, we're the first generation of our family to come yeah. here and actually try it out. And look, again, it was a struggle. It mm. was a climb, guys. Mm. It was like, we're not at the peak yet. Yeah. But we were trying to actually be be successful in our way. Yeah. And just, you know, like, well, we're doing fine. Yeah, We're living comfortably. I think yeah. that that's something that I can be proud of. Yeah. Also, I think this journey... Oh my God, I have so much of learnings from this journey. Um, I think every time I speak about this, I kind of get teary-eyed. Um, I think this journey taught me as well how much poverty takes away choices. Mm. True. If you don't have money... It's really, really sad to 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 have seen... I haven't... I wouldn't say I have lived poverty. Because even if we live in a... You know, in a, a slums area, area yeah. um, we were still quite okay because um, my father was still able to afford to um, send us to good schools but mm. everyone around us were like mostly um, fisher folks who would really just rely on their daily catch to sustain their mm. living right mm. and I've realized that um, poverty really takes a lot of your choices and yep. a lot of that dream yeah yeah so maybe us being in in a privileged state where we actually had more choices. It's about time to to make them believe again in mm. the power of dreams, dreams. and that um, poverty should not be inherited anymore. Exactly. Yeah. It should. And I want to add something into that. Mm. Um, poverty is not going to be the reason that it would limit you in yeah. reaching your goals, guys. Yeah. Um, I guess this would come to what's your discarte in yeah. life? What, what do you not, call this? Yeah. What, what's discarte in English? I don't know. I, don't like, know. I guess Discarte. like what you drive yeah. in life. Yeah. Like don't just say that I'm poor. I can't yeah. do anything. Like You're do poor. something about it. Do it's, something it's about like, it. Um, it's like y- we're not downplaying the difficulties of being poor. Yeah. Yeah. But don't settle with being poor. Exactly, exactly. right. Mm. Be the first person in your family to actually finish say high yeah, school, exactly. finish yeah. college or yeah. university. Do something about yourself. Like I've been watching. I just want to segue. Segue. Yeah. I, I kept watching this, um, like, uh, para paraan. Yeah. Like business-minded people yeah. in the Philippines who started from say a thousand pesos of investment, and then look at them now. That wasn't easy. Like mm. listening to their stories, but it inspired me because you can actually do something. Yeah. You can start young. Yeah. Sell something. And the power of education. Oh my god! <laughs> exactly. I just can't emphasize the power of education because. Again, I would go back to my parents. I think my parents are just like phenomenal. Like Aww, I bet equally they are. as important as my aunt would be my parents. And yeah. like I remember um 
because my it's only my father who was working as um government employee. So mm. he earns okay relative to our neighbors, but because there was four of us who had to go to a private school because my father always thought that if if I continue sending them to good schools, then they would learn how to speak English mm. Mm. and that it would pave the way to a better future and stuff. So it was yep. very difficult. Like my father always had to get that promissory note when mm. you have yeah. your exams because yeah. they can't pay on time. Yeah. So they would promise to pay this amount on this time. And then mm. there was this one instance where my... Um, I had to attend this summer class mm. because um, that summer class would make me eligible to be on the pool of who can compete for the school for this maths competition. Mm -hmm. And um, that summer class, we had to pay 500 pesos. Uh. And we can't even afford 500 pesos mm, at that time. That but I really wanted to be part of that summer class. Yeah. So w at that time, my mother was sick and we just had no money. And this is the time when the 10 peso coins just came out. Mm -hmm. Do you remember yeah. the 10 yeah. peso? Yeah, yeah. And then we had this very small Sari Sari store. So every day, I would um, I would get the 10 peso and just put it, set it aside mm -hmm. for the rainy, rainy days. And that's what my mom did as well. And so that was significant for her to actually open that last bit of Oh. blanket security mm. blanket financially mm. so that i can go to that summer class yeah uh yeah so uh <laughs> and yeah, it, yeah. it makes me really <laughs> emotional every time i talk about that because um looking back it just you, you know to be able to give up that little of what you have mm. to, little to no money yeah you guys to, need tissues to, <laughs> <laughs> i think so <laughs> to fund so. to fund your um son's education <clears throat> that really says a lot about how much my parents dreamed for us. <laughs> so, and then, look, yeah, like 500 pesos, like, mm. my God. I mean, not to brag, but like 500 pesos now would just be, it's like, oh, let's go coffee at my treat. Yeah, yeah. But true. before, it was like everything to yeah. us. It was a luxury. It was a luxury. And so I made sure that I made a good use out of that 500 pesos. But you know what? And also, really? and also saying that they believed in you because exactly. they are a loving parent mm. that just believe in their child yeah. and they're hoping that you would also achieve like thousands or hundreds of dreams that you've done for yourself, yeah. but not only for yourself, but also to your family. Yes. And you're doing that now. Oh, so, so you are an amazing. You're awesome. How fortunate am I to have parents who really believed in education? Even, very, even very. after being told by, like even my aunt was telling my father, it's like, stop sending them to private school. <laughs> they don't need to go to private school. They'll be all right. And then my father is like, no, no, I'll keep on borrowing money mm -hmm. so that they can go to private school. Good on them. Like, so, that's, that's a lot you. of... Yeah, Papa. that's a my lot of reasons. Shout, shout my out mom. to our parents. I just mm. gave them my mom, social. My, my father. Oh, my yard. A four down five hundred. Yeah, Ma mama and papa. Mom. Like our latest episode, which actually yeah. the episode five of our journey, the starting as a profession. Like we were um, also talking about my dad um, being the first person to actually graduate from college. Yeah, and he sacrificed a lot. And he is a working student, yeah. um, working as a security at night and work, mm. uh, studying in the morning. He juggled a lot of things. We were so broke. I yeah. tell you what, I can really relate. You're very relatable. And I guess like back then, we don't have the luxury that we have yeah. now. We have a bahay kubo yeah. and a tricycle. Yeah, see? And a tricycle oh is so emotional now. So this is like... <laughs> <laughs> it is open for... Yeah. Pero, and then, no, no, um, I just want to give them a big credit because mm. they did sacrifice a lot and mm. they they actually, um, they hope for the best. And yeah. you know what? We turned out really great. Yeah. Because now we're, we have the, the, the opportunity <laughs> oh or the capacity yeah. to give back. Yeah. yeah. And that's where we at. And yeah. we're, I'm actually encouraging those who are watching this podcast or listening to this podcast. I hope you get inspired because mm. our stories are not just stories, guys. We're actually coming from a really a personal, real life experience, yeah. Yeah, 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 personal experience, and also like um, we want to give back to the people that actually helped mm. us to where uh, to help put us to where we're at. Yeah. at this point, mm. and we're still gonna keep continue being good people, being 
helpful to others yeah. and touching people's lives. Mm. So I'm hoping that we can convey this message to yeah. this podcast. All right. Given those stories. <laughs> <laughs> heavy ones. Very heavy, heavy ones. ones. <laughs> who got <laughs> yarn? <laughs> <laughs> wait, right. who got wait. yarn? Right, I'll, 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 let you, I'll let you have a sip. <laughs> yeah, true. Okay. Like, are we <clears throat> even there yet to the last part of your um, yeah, 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 question? Look, we're nearly done. We're nearly done. Wait. I'm mm. just about to ask you the final question. Well, second to the last. Okay. <laughs> second to the um, last. Given all all that success story when would you consider yourself as successful then oh my god that's so hard um success how, how do you like let's start with this how do you define success well success is Wait. relative it can, like yeah. something coming, that i've achieved but yeah it would yeah, have to be a very personal answer yeah coming from kevin's um mm, perspective. perspective and oh, his experience okay. now i think um I'd like to go back to my previous answer. I think success. Miss Universe Yarn. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hello po, baka naman. <laughs> with a purpose. Exactly. <laughs> with a heart. <laughs> um, um, I think to me, um, definitely it has changed through the years. Like mm. to, I mean, it's undeniable. Sometimes you see success as like what you see in social media when you compare to others. Mm -hmm. But um, I guess now I'm trying to work on being better. And mm -hmm. part of that is actually defining what success is. And so to me, what success is being able to have a purpose that's bigger than yourself. Oh, Very good answer. And no, I, thank, thank you. Thank you. No, it's, <laughs> it's about having something that you cannot achieve in your lifetime. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I know... But you know you can make a difference. Yeah. Because if you base your success on like... Oh, I want to do masters. That's yeah. very achieve. I mean, not very achievable, <laughs> but you can achieve you it. You can. You can. And then what's the next thing? And mm. and we get into this cycle of just like always going for the next big thing. Yeah. That's not necessarily bad. That's part of growth. Mm -hmm. But what do you do that for? Exactly. It's the next step. That's so that's deep. that's my that's, that's my um definition of success, I yeah. guess. And I think I'm quite fortunate to have known my purpose. I think my purpose very early yeah. in my professional career. And that's really to give back as much as I can yeah. to less privileged. And can I just give you a credit though? Because you also started this business in the Philippines who actually surprises people mm. through their chocolate. Yeah. So is it still going though? No, it's not unfortunately. Uh, but hopefully but, there would well, be something in the near future. Yeah, we're, we're hoping that, I'm hoping that you can re rekindle that yeah. that um, business. See. But yeah. he was actually um, surprising um families say parents uh whoever that are like having their birthdays so you facilitate a uh, giving gifts mm, bouquets yeah. Yeah. um chocolates and you took a video of those and this is guys coming from a provincial life yeah like people who doesn't actually know what roses are or, or who yeah, hasn't exactly. tried hasn't even tried chocolates are and every time i see your videos just I I cry. I'm very emotional <laughs> because, in a way that I, this is most of my relatives. Yeah. This is most of my relatives. Like even before unboxing a really big box coming from Germany from mm. my aunt, is a really fulfilling um achievement for us. Like mm. getting a say a shoe or like a shirt like yeah. has your label on it. Yeah. Because this is like a very re re relatable overseas story. Yeah. Exactly. Don't get me wrong, yeah. but. Yeah, it was like that kind of feeling that they something has been done special for them through your business. Mm. That was for me like an epitome of what you're actually trying yeah. to convey. That to was people. that was the goal really. I I didn't yeah. want to just start a business for money alone. Mm. I didn't want it to be the driver. It had to be impactful. Yeah. As a matter of fact, um it was so sad to kind of let it go because of COVID because um one example I still remember to this day was mm. someone from overseas actually messaged the page and then saying that um, I like I was reminded of this video a year ago mm. and then my mom is now dead. Oh. And oh. that was the last surprise we oh. gave to her. Yeah. Oh. And so it's like that video of her mom being so happy mm. that lingers forever. So it's like, oh my God, it's actually making a difference. It's yes. And it's just so good to have had a business mm -hmm. that made a lot of difference, but fortunately made good money as well. 
Yeah. So how good is that to be starting from your passion and then to be able to get good money on the side? Yeah. yeah. And at the same time, I, I touch think, a lot of lives. Yeah, yeah, I think you should continue that. I, I, I want to invest in that. <laughs> please. <laughs> no, uh, let, please. Let, please. Let, let's, let's, let's think rethink. about that. Yeah, because yeah, it's... it. I mean, business has just changed because of COVID. Like, yeah, the, the main reason really why I mm. stopped it is because I was very upfront with um, the people who were working doing the delivery. It's like, look, I can't... I, I can't take it to just do nothing if you guys get sick with COVID. Exactly but right. But at the same time, I recognize it can be very expensive in the Philippines. And yeah. I just don't yeah. have the capacity financially to cover whatever happens to you when mm. you're delivering. And True I can't that. just turn a blind eye if you get sick. Mm. Yeah. So I guess it's hard, but the best thing I can do now is to somehow stop it. Yeah. Hopefully well, not permanently. Let's yeah. see. Let's well, see. Well, let me know in the future. I'm yeah. very interested in putting an investment to it because I really believe... <laughs> Shark Tank yarn. Oh, oh I, no. Like, this is coming from a Are genuine... Are you a share? Yeah. No, no. N- not, I, I don't want to like buy a share. I'm mm. just saying that I, I believe in the purpose of the business because yeah. I'm also a fan. Yeah. So this is me coming yeah. from a fan. And if... It also opened up a lot of opportunity to actually help those you yes. employ. Oh my God, yes. Why not? Like, actually, I, I, I'd rather be that giving employment to people who actually needs it. It was actually so good because like, I don't know, not to brag, but it was good money for Philippine standards. Yeah, exactly. Like, because yeah. every delivery, right? Yeah. They would get like 600 pesos. And oh. that's a lot in Philippines. That's like, a lot. Oh, that Every delivery. All, can you imagine? Every delivery. Can you imagine? That's actually a day. Yeah. More than a exactly. day of a salary of someone who's actually working as a construction worker. Yeah. So, oh my gosh. And so come Valentine's Day, imagine how much they would be earning. Yeah. I let's, mean, o- let's open it up. <laughs> <laughs> let's reopen it. But yeah, it. I mean, I'm just happy it panned out the way I wanted it to be. Yeah. To be impactful. And, and again... I'm just raising my hand here. <laughs> raising my let's hand see, here. Let's see. Okay, I'm, it's getting really late. We I need know. To finish this. Okay. 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 Since sorry. Kevin is a very big fan of um, Miss Universe, oh my we'll, God. we'll give him the opportunity to answer the very last question of oh, t- Miss this Universe. Year's wow. Okay. Wait. Oh all my right. God. All right. So all right. Kevin, I actually don't wait. I actually don't remember the question okay. because I was so annoyed <laughs> with Celeste not going. So I was okay. looking at it blindly. Okay, okay. Kevin. If you win Miss Universe... Wait, I need an interpreter. (laughs) (laughs) How will you work to demonstrate this... Sorry, sorry, let me rephrase. How will you work to demonstrate that this is an empowering and progressive organization? Pag ingon sa mga tao o sa imuhang actions nga kaning organisasyon Mauni siya ang makatabang sa mga tao. Tama ba? Em- empowering and em- empowering. <laughs> Sabarek, kabalo, nagsasabot na siya English. Oh my God, it's so difficult. Wait, which organization? Uh, yeah, so, so I'll right. assume that I'm Miss I'm Universe. really a contestant. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, Take a sip. <laughs> oh my God, that's so hard. <laughs> <laughs> Sina stress siya. <laughs> Wait. Wait. Give me sayap na nakuha ng kalesod po ko. In fairness. Wait, that it's impactful. Wait, that it's impactful. Ano yun? Empowering, like again, read where, it where properly. Was that? Yeah. Sorry. Mm. Oh, Girl, yeah. Na- natakot ako. Lagi. Parang okay naman ako buong ano no, buong time. Uh, Ngayon lang ako natakot uh, ng legit. Kasi, kasi this is my dream. <laughs> <laughs> this is the dream. <laughs> this is the dream. <laughs> yeah. So true. Hang on, I need to. Okay, take a look. Na wala akong page. Uh, oh. Uh, wala na. Wala expert okay. na. Mm. Sorry. If you win Miss Universe, yeah. How would you work to demonstrate? that this is an empowering and progressive organization? If I would have the chance to win Miss Universe... <laughs> well, uh, well <laughs> <laughs> I would show that it is an empowering organization by just showing my authentic self. If Lots. I made it here, being authentic and true to myself, <laughs> then I'm sure you guys can make it to where you want to head with just being you. Thank you. <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh, I'm I'm sorry. Oh Thank you. Oh and I. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, so, legit, 
Hoy <laughs> legit na takot ako doon ah. <laughs> Namatago si Ro. I mean, kinaya ko yung other questions, no. Pero oh. yung surprise question medyo hindi ko na prepare yun. Pang miss you good siya. Pang oh my god. Siya. Okay, to wrap That's this so up. That's so scary. Any messages that you want to give to the audiences if we do have any audience listening to this yeah. episode? Yeah. No, um, I think we do. I just want to give a shout out to the our say family and friends who are actually putting in comments to the podcast who's actually listening. <clears throat> I really appreciate you guys and we're reading it. So please keep them coming. And again, um, I, we're just hoping to inspire you. Again, uh, your message to yeah. everyone. I'm so... Th- uh, first of all, I want to thank you for guesting me. It was really fun. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, right? We, we need right? to do this again. Right? Wait, I didn't again. think it would be this fun. <laughs> uh-huh. I like listening to myself now. <laughs> I feel like... I, hey, I we need to bear the head. I feel like <laughs> I like my sound with this one. Uh, Hopefully it translates... <laughs> Well, yeah. I, I'm so I, I'm I'm glad you guys invited me, and I feel so honored to be your Thank first you. guest for this podcast. Oh my god, it actually feels good, and continue to be very inspiring. Mm-hmm. Continue to do your thing because yeah. for sure. You make a lot of people happy, and Aww, you know every you. soul that's touched by whatever you do means a lot. That thank goes you. a very, very long way. Aww. Again, guys, that's and all uh, the best, yes. Aww, all Aww. the best with whatever plans you have in the future. Thank you. But also, do you have any like um, message to the uh, people who is <clears throat> actually probably inspired now to be exploring the world of Australia, o- Australia, or maybe yeah. like everywhere, like being overseas? Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I guess it's just just know that it's not going to be easy. Mm-hmm. It's not a walk in the park. Mm-hmm. But whatever, I mean, I'm not very spiritual. I'm not very religious. But I think whatever God has planned for you, mm-hmm. I still believe in that higher being, right? So yeah. Yeah. whatever God or whoever higher being has planned for you, it might be a rege- it's. It, it might not be what you want because it's a lot better or a lot mm. bigger than what you're actually pursuing. Exactly. But eventually, it will make sense. It will be better. Mm. If things aren't as good as how you like it to be now, it mm. will be better. Exactly. And always believe in the power of people believing in you and don't waste that opportunity if it comes. Aww. Aww. That's, that's so the deep. Bug or- yeah. That's Again, so deep. guys, um, that's a reminder for you that everyone would have to tackle a different journey. Yeah, it's yes. totally up to you how you're gonna face it. Yeah. Believe in yourself. Yeah, it, it'll always start from you. But okay. no bias. Australia is really such a good country to yeah. be yes. at. It's yeah. such a it's such a welfare country mm. that mm. it's not um, equal. It's equitable. So yeah. whoever mm. is suffering more, you kind of get. Some more help. More help. Yeah. 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 True. So it's it's a very good country. And and the government is trying their best to actually like look after everyone. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. yeah I oh, guess. that was fun. Thank you yeah, so much. Let's, let's wrap this Yay. up. Oh my god. Again, once again, guys. My name is Roel. And I'm Sheila. And thank you for listening, guys. And this is the the Commoners Podcast. No, he, he's got to do it too. Okay. Oh, okay. Wait, what? Uh, on the count of three, yeah. you're gonna t- say that this is the. This is the. Commoners Com- podcast. Commoners podcast. Okay. All right, all right. L- so you introduce yourself, okay? Okay. All right, let's do an ender. Okay. okay. So I'll be the last one. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Again, and guys. Together. My, together. Yep. Yeah. Okay. One. <laughs> one, two, again. three. My name is Ruel. And I'm Sheila. And I'm Kevin. And again, this is the Commoners podcast. podcast. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was guys. so fun. I swear. Oh my gosh. Okay. Oh my God, did you have fun? Yeah.